staff recommendation that we adopt the agenda. Um, does anybody have changes to the agenda? Um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to add an item on the agenda to discuss um, an upcoming event in the Smoke Buff Park um, <coughs> Survivor Run. Dylan's here to what, have, wanted to address us on that. Um, so can we add that? Okay. Would anyone like to motion to accept the agenda? I'll make a motion. Second. Show of hands. Okay, so um, let's. Did everyone get a chance to review the committee minutes that were distributed? Yeah. Uh, Terry asked just that we. Um, it's Terry, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Terry asked that um, I just make mention that to that we will no longer review the meeting minutes at the beginning of the meetings. So if everyone could just take the time to read them beforehand. Okay. Okay. Was there any changes that came? Um, I just had a couple of like tiny notes. Um, under Matt Parker, Squamish Trail Society alternate, it was noted. Um, I'm actually now the designated rep for Trail Society, and Sean Gosnell um, is the alternate. And Sean mentioned just that he, he should be marked absent. I guess if the absent thing is bumped up. Uh, um, so because Sean wasn't at the last. Week. So, oh, there was something else I saw. Oh, just under management plan wording, it was, I think, just trials writing is supported in the area generally identified as opposed to just a trial, just a tiny typo. Oh, so it was trials instead of trials? Yes. <coughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, trials. Yeah. It's the trials. Oh, trial. Trials. Trial. Yeah. But that was it. That was Do we have to motion that? Do you agree? Let's change it. Uh, yeah, we still need a, a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Show of hands. Okay, um, is there any other business arising? Um, so I guess we could we could talk about the survivor run now, so that at the beginning. Um, did you have a presentation, or did you just have some wanted to discuss it with us? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to uh, be able to address you today, so I had I was just planning to come and introduce myself, okay. so I didn't bring any. Could you sit down, please, for the cameras? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I do not have a formal presentation, but I did bring uh, maps of the uh, proposed race. Uh, it's on my computer screen, so I would be very happy to. Uh, huddle around and discuss it. Uh, however, overview, a quick overview of the race. The proposed dates are August 25 to 26, uh, the, so the end of, of August, the weekend after the Squamish 50. Uh, the race Survival Run Canada is a, an offshoot of races in, by similar names in Nicaragua and, uh, and Australia, which are ultra-marathon distance uh, obstacle course races. Not obstacle course races as in Tough Mudder where you dig pits, put barbed wire, run through electric wires. This is natural obstacles. Might be climbing something, climbing a tree, climbing a, a rock face, swimming a, a river, carrying, uh, carrying an, a weight for a distance. Uh, and this is, will be the first year that it's been run in Canada. Uh, very excited to be, have the opportunity to bring it to Squamish. And I was hoping for a, to run a portion of it on the Saturday through the, uh, through the Smoke Bluffs. Uh, the, uh, broadly, it's a similar uh, course to the Squamish 50 uh, for a large portion through the Bluffs, but the finish would be somewhat different, and that'd be, rather than try and describe it, it would be uh, easier to show it. Uh, for, so what, what uh, type of, uh, in terms of the uh, informa other information that the committee might be interested in, in addition to primarily running, I was looking to have a couple cl obstacles, cli climbing and rappelling in the bluffs. One at the, uh, in the southwest, southeastern corner, uh, I believe it's uh, one for the road crag. I was hoping to have a, a climb and a rappel. And one at Meeting Cool. 
in terms of the number of people, I'm looking to have 100, up to 100 people start on the Friday morning. It's a high attrition rate, so I'm expecting a, no more than 30 people to finally make it through the bluffs. Uh, and so it would be a fit. My take on this is that it's uh, going to be a fairly low, low impact uh, conventional event insofar as the uh, parts in the bluffs are concerned. So Any questions? Uh, could you tell me the dates again, please? August 25, 26. Okay, so the portion through the bluffs would be on the 26th. Ah, thank you. What time of day do you expect that that portion will go through? Uh, it would be spread out over the entire day. Okay. Because this is at the end, so we will have uh, <coughs> full scatter. I'm expecting uh, the first runners to come through shortly after dawn. And cutoff will be around, so it will be mid afternoon about 6 o'clock. Mm. So you're planning a Friday, Saturday? Yes. In the Friday, with the rationale is that uh, the densest, uh, when you've got the densest uh, grouping of racers and the most opportunity to interfere with other trail users, put that uh, when most people are at, work, uh, are at work and the usage is lowest. Um, did you have uh, did you have any plans for how you would address um, the the crag on the day of? Would you be closing those routes to any other activity, or or would there be a certain timeline, like a few hours, or the number of uh, the of racer is it will be fairly low. So over, uh, the amount of the closure during the day would be really quite limited. There are two ways that I could uh, deal with it. Uh, also, this is a relatively underused crag compared to other crag, uh, in terms of the end of the month of the road. And yep. I'll address ne the neat and cool area in a moment. Okay. Uh, but month of the road, fairly underutilized. Yep. Uh, the two op options that I am considering, I'm open to uh, discussion on that, is either put up two sets of lines and whichever one no one else wants to be to be on, we'll use that one. Or when there's no runner, and we, we just pull our ropes to the side, other people can use it. Um, and then when a runner comes, we say, do you mind if we just slot on quickly, throw the runner up and, up and down, the, up down, and step to the side again. So it wouldn't be blocked off time. It would be a case of we use it, we use it when we need it. That would be my preferred option. I think there's less visual and uh, visual impact and in interference that way. Who would be overseeing the uh, technical component, i.e. the rappelling? Do you have, have, to, have you hired mountain guys to I'm oversee this activity? I'm speaking with the academy, the same people that run the, uh, the uh, Via Ferrata up at, uh, in the, at the gondola. Uh, to, they've given me a quote, so that's one opportunity. I'm also going to be speaking to the gym. So it's uh, going to be uh, qualified. It's going to be experienced people that are are, are they going to be qualified guides? They, that's a, whether it would be a guide uh, or a top rope certified. Uh, I'm looking at. I would go probably with the top with the top rope uh, certified person. So it would be the appropriate sort of certification for this. I'm not too keen on need of cool on August 25th, I think. I kind of as, agree with that. Pardon? I was going to uh, um, speak to that as, uh, in a moment. My thinking on, the, on that is, no. The, my first choice, which uh, would be uh, to have a rappel to the left of cornflakes, where there isn't actually a route at the moment, and to do the climb on cornflakes. Is everyone familiar with the climb cornflakes? Okay. Yes. It's uh, the least used route on the crag. Uh, so that would be my first choice. Option, uh, my option B, around the corner, the, the, the short little warm-up finger lock cracks. Above that, there's an open book, a non-angle open book, that is rarely noticed and even rarely. So, rarely Kangaroo Corner? Okay. No, to the right of Kangaroo Corner. Look at the problem. Look at the clean starts. So it's a, you, the way I, I normally access that corner, I got the 5-9 finger locks, uh, moved two meters, a few meters to the right on the ledge and then go up. Uh, but those, uh, those shorter cracks are less used. 
that might be a better option in that it brings you right down to where the trail is as opposed to if you use like fear of flying, which is, you know, to the right of flying circus and to the left of cornflakes, kind of it's basically you know, kind of a contract route to the right. Um, it, you're going to be in amongst those kind of boulders where people have their packs kind of spread out and stuff like that. If it's a sunny day, if it's a rainy day, there's no problem at all. For, there's no impact to climbers at all, right? So, you know, your second option, right down to the trail, that open book area that you mentioned, I think that's a, probably a more palatable site for climbers. And also, a little further down by Smoke Bluff Wall, you can also have a big long rappel um, right down onto the road. What are you thinking about? Um, uh, I don't know the names of the climbs. It's the part on the on the main trail that comes in. It's got a little bit of the undercut. Um, it's just, got, to, just to the left of Kangaroo Corner. It's to the no no. Or to the right. Uh, it's north of Neat Pool. So you're just starting to head down oh, and head past Neat Pool. Yes. There's a big wall right there. Very underutilized. And climbs there. Um, and coming right down there would make a fabulous long rappel right to the trail. For a rappel, it'd be fantastic. For a, for climbing, it would really be yeah, so good. Yeah. Are you doing both? Is so so many climbing fingers there? Ah, uh, so you're climbing up one and then rappelling down. Yes. Ah, I see. So probably climbing up cornflakes and then down the rap route. Is that correct? So I was hoping to do it the other way around. Where there's a climbers trail to the top, rappel down, down to the left of cornflakes, and then do it up and down. My concern with the neat and cool is that uh, that area is frequently used by people. Used. It's very heavily it's used, and it's also used frequently by people who are beginners. Mm -hmm. So because it's one of the, like there's not a, a lot of areas to set up top ropes in the smoke bluffs. So there's a lot of people going there either in guided groups or courses or on their own and have just learned how to set up top ropes. And I I can I feel concerned about um, the runners approaching those groups that are at the top of cliffs um, and that aren't used to being there. <laughs> uh, we would have a person at the, to at the top in all cases. Uh, at, once a runner is 30, 35 hours into a, a run, I I'm not sure I'd trust them to make, uh, to make breakfast cereal yeah, unassisted. So uh, they would be, be chaperoned. But I'm sorry, I really am not comfortable with the use of neat and cool. You've characterized it as being not much used. There's some yeah. used crag in Canada. Just the crag is that. used, that's referring to the specific line. But the lines are so close together. I mean, it's it's um, from an aesthetic perspective, that's my first choice. If there's discomfort with it uh, and the, the corners to the right would be, uh, would be more palatable, I, I'm happy with that. That's not a problem. When you're talking about the aesthetic, um, are you expecting you know things like media coverage and, and videographers and all of that, you know, along with this event? I w I'm looking to have a, no a number of photographers along the event, yes, uh, but it's also so partially it's from the camera's perspective and partially it's from the the racer's experience, having these uh, big open lines, beautiful views of Squamish. So, so it's two, two sides of aesthetics. Yeah. But as I said, I thought I'd throw, I'd throw out the idea of cornflakes, but I figured that I was going to get pushed back on that. Um, if, ever, if it seems like there are strong feelings about it, so in that case, my proposal is to the right, uh, utilizing the finger lock cracks and the corner above it. Okay. So I'm still not clear which way. You are talking about uh, what's the name of the route you're talking about? Ah, clean start three, cracks. There's three cracks. Yeah, the clean starts. Clean starts. That's um, they're just to the right of Kangaroo Corner and to the left of the picnic area. Is that what we Oh, yeah. yes, that's what we call clean yeah. starts. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, or yeah, yeah. clean starts, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that might be a more, so, so not so dramatic, but uh, that would cause less grief for you, I suspect. So, right. Sure. Yeah. Does okay, everyone support that? I'm, I'm toying with it in that it is one day on one weekend in the entire year, and I'm not sure that I'm inherently opposed to, you know, having the event on a popular crag. There's lots and lots of trail systems within Squamish, yeah. 
that are effectively closed for event weekends or event days, and to climb, you know, to close one particular crag. I'm not sure that I'm actually opposed to that. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm not opposed or in favor. It's not, you know, I really am stuck. But it is, as I said, uh, probably the South Rivers tries probably the most used crag in Canada. So. That may be the case, but. Not, you know, on the for, for an event for one day of a weekend in, in, within the entire year, I'm not sure that uh, oh. having an event feature something like that may not be a bad idea. Oh, so. Uh, so should we, why don't we, can we put it to a vote? No, not yet. Or not yet, or do we, we need, we probably need more feedback from the rest of the committee. Yes. Um, are we able to put things out to email? Um, that is approved, okay. but you certainly, I could log in the minutes that at this point you're generally supportive of, of the race as it's been presented, um, and for staff to follow up. Can I get a motion to accept that? Yeah. Um, and I, I would like to follow up on the Craig selection um, at a later meeting. Our next meeting would be July, um, so that would probably be a good time to um, like go through the final details. Um, another question I had was, um, where are your first aid stations and um, other um, like racer amenities going to be located? I didn't see that on the on the plan. It's an unsupported race. Okay. So there won't be any aid stations. I'm looking to have the finish at Rose Park. Okay. And so the in terms of first aid, it where part of if someone has got a top rope certification. Of, uh, they will typically have some degree of first aid, and we would have uh, medics on on call to cover the whole course. And it, um, did is there any uh, modifications to the bluffs themselves that you were considering in terms of um, trail use or the uh, like other obstacles that will be going through the bluffs? No modifications. I was looking to flag the uh, the course, uh, similar density and style to use that used by Ridge Line for. Uh, Squamish 50. Okay. So there will be flagging and Tyvek uh, signs every time. Uh, and is there there's a cleanup crew as well for that? The sweep, uh, to the, as much as possible, the sweeps uh, who close the course will clean it. And what they are unable to clean will be cleaned within the next couple of days. Um, okay, well, um, would it be possible as well for you to email a map? Of the race as well for to share with the community members, and um, and then I'd like to invite you to our July meeting. To is our July meeting is it a walkthrough or traditionally? Traditionally. Um, <coughs> okay. For now, um, I'll keep in touch with you, and um, if if we're not having a formal in-house meeting, we can arrange an, arrange some way to provide documentation to the members during that meeting. Um, and um, get an approval for the Craig. Right. So may I take this, uh, the, 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 con the concept of the, of the race is subject to uh, taking a look at the, the trail over the next couple of weeks okay. and deciding about the Crags uh, that is support. Obviously, I um, suspect a question that will come up soon is insurance. I'm going to be carrying five million general liability and uh, uh, the district will be named. I'm not sure if any other parties need to be named as far as the bluffs is concerned. But uh, we can, uh, that's a detail that can be worked out. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the qualifications of the individuals that are supporting the event and the insurance, that's really not within our curriculum. Okay. Um, just about the way you're doing your top roping. It's basically they're just going to go up top rope and they get lower down. So yes. if they're not an experienced player, then it's, that's not a problem. And so they're not like climbing up, topping out, and then repelling down. Um, no, that's okay. not my, inten my okay. intention of it. That, so that's that's complexity. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry, following up on that, you originally said repelling, so which is. Uh, come to the top of the crag via the uh, the climber's access path. Rappel down. Rappel. Climb lower. Yes. 
is a big difference. Well, yeah. repel and then climb and lower. So the original idea was to like propel down fear of flying, right. kind of the open face there, gotcha. and then climb up on the place. That was your sort of original um, yeah. plan. And then the other one we use the clean starts. Uh, they repel down that bulging open face and then climb the clean starts. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I think kids would work well. Great. Um, one more question with the, as far as the roots concerned, it's supposed to be a surprise for the racers. Um, so, to the degree possible, I've seen anyone that, that should know about it. <coughs> We're on camera right yeah. now. I'm both, <laughs> yeah, I'm both, I'm, uh, I was taking a flyer that, the, that none of my racers have, uh, are currently watching the feed. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Terry, you have drafted a motion? I did. Or just a simple motion that can, we can move on to staff. So the motion would be that the Smoke Bluff Park Committee is generally supportive of the Survivor Run Race as presented at the Smoke Bluff Park meeting day, May 4th, 2017. You're not committing to anything, but it just says that from what you've heard so far, you're supportive. Um, we don't need to add a subject to The subjects will all be dealt with at a staff level, I believe, uh -huh. for, for uh, managing the race organizing. I, I think with the gentleman here is just to see that the, this uh, committee is supportive. Thank you. I have to give him my card. Who's, who has it? So if you drop me a line, I will send you the, the map. Absolutely, I will do that. And happy to just see any discussions that you move on. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Can I just get a mover and a second for that motion? I'll make move. Thank you. Motion. Anyone second? I'll second. Thank you. Show of hands. Okay, um, so moving on to business, who would you like to go over the budget and park maintenance contract? Okay, operating budget for the Smoke Bluffs Committee uh, remains at $5,000. However, there is an expected expense to come, and I believe it was discussed in the previous um, budget overview. Uh, Keith Halverson to do some work on the Upper Loop Trail panorama, and that, that date is still we're still working on that date. The weather, unfortunately, just hasn't uh, been cooperative, so I'm not sure you understand that. So, uh, contract services budget for 2017 the budget increased from 22,000 to 24,000. Previous month's expenses $5,253.34. Current monthly expenses I have nothing in my basket at this point. Uh, remaining budget $18,746.66. Uh, um, summary of monthly expenses, uh, maintenance contract, plea, and a sign, uh, a small sign. That's the, work. That's the, uh, the, uh, yeah, he has a... It, it has an A on the end. Oh, did I? It's, yeah. I missed the A, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Spelling mistake. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, John works with, um... Yeah, I just wasn't aware of the acronym. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so with the previous business, uh, the winter maintenance, clearing swales, ditches and trenches, bike rack replacement at Tunnel Rock, um, unfortunately it was damaged and it will be replaced so we just got a confirmed date to, to get that reinstalled. And Keith Halverson to do repairs upon loop trail panorama date to be determined. And I spoke with the contractor today and uh, yes, they're still trying to nail the date. So. Um, new business, general maintenance ongoing, wash and litter brushing, contractor working with heavy duty to cut away old logging cable from free and easy Craig. And, sorry. Am I too low? You're too low. I hear that speaking really loud. No. Okay. Okay, she's got the report. Okay. And there's the trails component here that we put on just for, um, I just wanted to clear with Brian because I think it was something that you had suggested in the last meeting that we put this on. So taking it that it was for maintenance and so forth on any of the trails. So on the agenda it comes up after Bob does his spiel, but I could, uh, I could do it right now. It's up to you. Uh, so the trails um, clearing that's happening right now is clean and brush one tube trail and 
the contractor is requesting some pressure treated materials required to build the landscape stairs on the high cliff trail. Good idea. So that's that you're, you guys are good with that? Yeah. Uh, you guys, you mean. Sorry, the committee, is the committee good with, with that? Oh, yes, yes. Being and being he's speaking to High Cliff later on uh, the crime report, they're tied together. So. Oh, okay. So. Okay. And that's all I have for this moment. Great, thank you. Bob, you're at the car park up there? Sure. So, um, car park is bigger and better. Um, I took a look in there this afternoon. I think things um, on the new section went quite well, and um, there's lots of room. Very well. Um, unfortunately, the old section is looking a little ratty right now. Um, there's some potholes. So, um, Sue and I will be working to get those potholes built shortly. Um, a lot of the roads in Squamish were received up this year, so uh, it's on the list. So, just so you're aware of that. Um, the BC Hydro Vegetation Clearance Update, um, we're, we're struggling a little bit to get the, the feedback from Hydro. They've been, they've been good, but we just didn't get the exact timeline. They've given us a map. I think that got forwarded, Sue. Did you send that to the committee? I didn't. I did actually not send the map. Okay. The so we can, we can send that out. It's, it's pretty much status quo what they've done in the past. Um, the, the question that, that Sue and I have is when you look at the the correspondence last year is that they're trying to get the work done before the freeze and weather caught them and then they were trying to get the work done this spring um, and I think the bird nesting has caught them so um, we're just trying to confirm that it may get delayed to the fall again if they, if they missed that bird nesting on them so um, we will follow up. There, is a, there was a map that I think was put out with the vegetation control uh, previously and uh, I did have a copy of that, a different copy of that with me. I'm not sure that you guys already had this. That's the okay. yeah. This is the original that went with the vegetation control. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess we've got a copy. Um, did you, would you mind passing it around and everyone get to go Sure. While we're doing that, can I ask a couple of questions about the car <coughs> park upgrades? It's, the way that it's been done, it's completely obliterated our trials access is turned it into a massive lake. So we can't actually get from where we unload the motorcycles. It's about two feet of water to get over to you know, where we start stepping up the rocks. So that whole area in behind the berm that was created and the vegetation that was left to the west, to the east of the car park, that's a massive lake. There's no ducks floating around in there, and uh, we have no way to get through. Can okay. we um, just do a site visit? Just so I'm yeah. clear on what we're talking about. We can look at So veg yeah. vegetation east? Well, it's actually what happened was the current park expansion pushed to the east, and then there's a berm developed there. There's one small cut in the berm that basically rolls off onto the old trail. But because the new car park is so much higher, and that burn, has the water that comes off the bluffs, all of the stormwater runoff, comes up against that burn and just has nowhere to go anymore. And it used to drain around that uh, okay. the old car park and across the sort of the, the waste between the two car parks. It used to come across there and around the outside, and now it has nowhere to go. So it's just created a massive leak in there. And completely made our trail unusable. Well, it's not the air trail, there's lots of people are coming through there as well. Yeah. Well, there extensive drainage down there? I saw drainage we put in. Yeah, we did some drainage um, by the bridge. We, we've always had some problems in that area as well. Like yeah, I see some by the landscaping company. So we, we went in and we put some culverts in there. And yeah. I saw the long, long west side okay. yeah. of the old parking lot down to the corner, down to the new bridge. Yeah. That's all been done. This is on the water on the opposite side of the car park. Yeah. It's, I, I looked at it before I came here, but it's, you know, deep. Okay. Yeah, it used to be about that deep, that much deep, and now I guess it's much, much worse. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And there's because it's not, you know, built up at all. I mean, one of the things that was always discussed even as part of the car park upgrade when it was ever going to be done was the that trail was going to be raised as well. So material, material brought in to do the car park, material was to be brought in and 
make that trail because it's always had under very high water events. There's been a couple of spots that when, you know they get quite deep. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was supposed to be part of the upgrade. Sure. Yeah, we'll take a look. Okay. Yeah. Do you have the contact? Too? Um, I can get. I'll give you the card. Oh, I tell you what, you can get a hold of me. I'm normally in Spanish, and you can get me there. Has anybody seen the lot on a full day, like a like a high use day? How is the how are people finding the delineation? Like, are they still parking nicely? Has there been any sun on the weekend? I took a picture of it one day, but it was almost empty. Uh, oh, so yeah. It's empty today it's when been, I came over. It's been pretty quiet. It's, there's a lot it's more the space. It looks great. So. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Brian, did you want to go ahead with Craig Worker? Yeah. Um, as you know, or may not know, the Skull Shock Society has a, a very successful program called the 10 3 program, which basically means 10 people for three hours. Um, we field volunteer groups in various areas. So I've got a group uh, coming in in mid May, I think uh, Saturday the 14th, to help John Harvey and Heavy Judy do some work on Highcliffe. Trail to get prepared for, for stepping and so on, and to clear out a lot of vegetation that is accumulated at the top of uh, the free and easy crag. So, you'll have 15 bodies there giving their time to, to the district. From uh, It's a an out of town sort of Christian group who, who like to do good works, and, uh, so they're providing 15 bodies. So, uh, there is that. and. Uh, the Crowd Keeper program, which I spoke about at the last meeting, uh, we're starting to get that up and rolling. I'm meeting with, uh, at the end of May or early June, we're meeting with representatives from the Alpine Club, the group, British Columbia Mountaineering Club, the Varsity Outdoor, Outdoor Club, and the Vancouver Rock Group. Uh, this, this represents a membership of thousands of, uh, of people. And, uh, the, the plan is to have the groups undertake caretaking of the crags. Uh, local groups and individuals such as Heavy and the rest of us are getting overwhelmed by the amount of new route development that is occurring in the, not just the bluffs but throughout the district. So uh, uh, we're hoping to assign specific areas to these clubs and they'll be self starting. We will sort of point them and help them out and provide advice. We will have a sort of a seminar at the end of the month and we'll bring together these groups and representatives from these groups with our rugged cleaners like Heavy Duty and Chris Small and all these guys and uh, they will tell them how the stuff is done and uh, we will guide them in terms of safety and protocol etc. So if this works it'll be like the 10 3 program, it'll, be, it'll perpetuate and help us out with maintenance. So, so it's, something has to happen. The volunteer groups in Swanage cannot keep up with the, the amount of work that's involved. So that's the district gives thirty thousand or so dollars towards uh, trail maintenance. Has there ever been a consideration to look at Craig a uh, Craig or Craig Mason's budget for you know something like volunteer crew? I can't say what Craig maintenance. Well, we do for trail maintenance already. A trail maintenance, crag maintenance are two different things. No, no, I'm talking about the district has already budgets and yep. gives to uh, SORCA the yep. STDA yep. 99 trials, about $30,000 a year, and it's paid for uh, you know, crews to go around and do repairs on trails used mm. by all trail users in the district. Mm. Has, have you ever considered actually applying for to the district for? something similar, vertical trails, if you will. Well, let me deal with the, the trails to begin with. First, the trails. Already, our budget is, what, $25,000 a year that comes from the district to to run our maintenance program in the plus, but that is strictly for trails. Okay? Yes. Uh, that is managed to some degree by John Harvey and contracts out to Calverson and so on. And, a certain degree of volunteerism is, has always been present and will probably increase again. Uh, when it comes to vertical management, the district does not want to have anything to do with the vertical management. This is a user group issue. and the, um, 
the district would not be happy with us having uh, you know, um, having our formalised uh, and private apprentice having just anybody do vertical maintenance. It has to be done by qualified people from climbing clubs. You just can't have you know YMCA suddenly decide to have a, a volunteer day and send a bunch of people here to do private maintenance. It just doesn't work. It has to be managed very really carefully. So I can't see the district funding a crime keeper program per se, so I wouldn't even try it. SAS wants to keep control of that ourselves. You had mentioned properly qualified individuals for uh, vertical maintenance. Mm -hmm. What sort of qualifications are they? They're highly skilled recreational users, just like your bikers. So if, if necessary, we can have them trained by ACMG guides and the proper methodology. So uh, that's, uh, it'll work much in the same way as trail maintenance, except these people will be cognizant with use of ropes and working in the vertical terrain. Is it, uh, do we have insurance for them, et cetera, et cetera? Clubs will certainly have insurance, I would imagine, for their people, yes. As I said, the Squamish Access Society is trying to make this a self-starting program for the clubs. We are not managing the program per se. We're initiating it and helping guide it. We're not actually doing the work ourselves. We're handing that over to the user groups. Do you uh, hire some sort of certified person to build trials for yourself? No, trials? no. Okay. Or did I claim to use qualified okay. people? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> if you're suggesting we use the ACMG guides to do this, I didn't. Was, I, I, I didn't, but I didn't make the claim about of ensuring qualified individuals. Yeah. Qualified <laughs> meaning that we assume that people who are members of Mountaineering clubs are a qualified user of the, the facility. Brian, is it, it's correct that each individual club would would be liable for their party because it's, it would be them initiating yeah. the, the work. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We're just the facilitators to get the work going and the record we did. We recommend it. It's always been a tradition in the climbing areas that the user groups do the maintenance of the so with PC parks. Uh, it has been so with the stroke lifts. So it has worked very well for us over the years. This is just formalizing it a little bit and to get it a little bit more organized so we get a little more help just by trail groups. It's, it's no different, except they're working in a vertical environment. I think it's great because um, the education of this program is something that's pretty unique. I think often climbers learn from friends or learn from guides how to set up their climbing equipment, but nobody learns how to take care of the environment that they climb in. Yeah. So I think it's a good, a good way to pass it through generations as well. Um, any other questions on the crime group? Uh, as you know, we also uh, try to ensure uh, that correct, uh, proper anchors, uh, approved anchor systems are used throughout the smoke bluffs. This has been a long standing uh, um, uh, policy of this committee, and uh, I'd like to see it continue to that end. I, I'd like to spend in the order of $100 or so of time on to get some equipment for heavy duty. For, for, for the free and easy crowd, uh, we should not have him uh, carry the cost of this improvement. If everybody's okay with that, I will purchase it for him and submit the expense to the district. Again, this has been a long standing protocol within the group. Do you see a show of hands or a motion? Yeah, I support that. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Show of hands. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian, I had a question actually um, on that line of things. Um, I know SAS has the um, bolt replacement program, um, but I noticed recently when I was climbing the bluffs there was a bolt, one bolt loose on um, Pink Cliff, mm -hmm. um, and I know that's probably not, like for one bolt it's not viable to send the, the um, bolt initiative um, from Scottish Access out mm -hmm. to replace one bolt. No, do you have anybody that would be able to... Um, I, heavy could do this. Heavy could do it? Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll email you the details. Yeah. And heavy is very good about that sort of stuff. Take care of it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. yeah, in terms of just to inform the committee, the SAS bolt replacement program it's, it's quite expensive. We hire ACMG guys to do it for all these reasons, and uh, this is serious stuff. However, in order to do it efficiently, we have to 
projects together in an efficient manner so we don't waste time. We can't send a, a ACMG guide to one single climb two miles up the trail. So we have, we have to send it to ten climbs. So we, we try to sort of lump, lump together projects for efficiency. So this is the only way we can do these one-offs. And uh, to, up to such times as the users themselves wake up and decide they, they might not do it themselves. Yeah, I would be we, happy to with some education, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's the Mag Patrol. Um, <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, board. Yeah, it's, it's kind of died over the last year or so. Yeah, we've, but we've given up on that. <coughs> but it, you can access it through the Squamish Access Society webpage. Okay. It is our mission. Okay. It's nothing to do with Squamish Planning. Yeah, it's nothing to do with that. Yeah. Lots of times you post stuff there and then <coughs> someone reads it and then they head out and they know they're going to Pink Cliff and so, oh, I saw there was a bolt missing or broken there, so they'll bring one with them and then yep. get to post it there so everyone knows also that, hey, this yeah. bolt's spinning. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, that, that group has died, so it doesn't seem... Facebook seems to be the way to go Yeah, sort of the Squamish Rock. Um, Is there a main patrol, like, a uh, page or whatever on that uh, yeah, Facebook uh, group? Go to SAS. On the Facebook group, though, on the Squamish Rock. Yeah, just go to SAS, info at Squamish. Yeah. Uh, and you'll find main patrol and just add your... Comments or, or you can go Facebook. We prefer you go directly to the web page, it's more formalized. Because yeah. you know, stuff on Facebook disappears five minutes later, so it would be better if it was registered with the website. Yeah, totally. so we'll I do, do believe they consult the Mag Patrol <coughs> just to check if anybody's posted on it before they do the program for the year. Terry, was there any recommendations to cancel from last? No referrals to cancel. Um, so we can um, start with roundtable discussion. Where did you want to start? No, I, I went through the park today. And it was looking good. Awesome, yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if I'm on the email list for the agenda. I, for some reason, thought that it started at 7 today. I don't know if I can make sure I'm on the email list. I got um, your email with the. With the uh, budget update, but I didn't get the Sorry. That's it, I think. I, I did hike up um, past Grand Doug and up to the radio tower that way. I know we had uh, previously talked about a possible new trail link up from the, um, from the uh, parking lot all the way to the radio tower, staying inside the park. It was a pretty nice trail. Um, it's been definitely used by trail spikers, and uh, it's right on the park edge. Um, and it's um, yeah, becoming a nicely worn in trail and it's, uh, I think it'd be useful for people to go and check that out. It's a nice hiking route, it's not too steep. No, I agree, we need to sort of formalize right. the trail to the bike way to at some point in time, but that is current land, I believe? Uh, it's inside the park. Is it? Yep, although the radio tower is on ground. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, trail yeah. too, it's entirely inside the park. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I agree, but we lack a viewpoint, a formal viewpoint. Yeah, it's a nice alternative to the loop trail. You go that way and then you come back down the, uh, the upper loop trail. Yeah, that's right. It's through Skunk Hollow and Lover's. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe get some more traffic on Skunk Hollow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I normally hike out of the, the, the loop trail above Octopus Dark and go straight up to the back of the tower. This is yep. the way I normally mm -hmm. do. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went up, um, I live in Osmond Hill, so I went up Tunnel Rock. Okay. Just like the Tunnel Rock, like, uh, access trail to get to the top of that, and you just keep on going straight up, basically, okay. following the trails by the trails. Yeah, it's nice. And it's all inside the park? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's once you get to the, you know, nine percent of the way to the top, there's a couple options where you can follow some trails by the way to the top, there's a couple options where you can follow some trails by groups that actually just eat out of the park for a minute and switch back, back into it. Nice. Goes up through uh, underneath the uh, power line right away. I'd like to walk that with you sometime. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. And did you have anything for roundtable? I think I've talked enough. I had a quick question, Bob, for you. Did you want to? Did you have anything there? Oh, I'm good. Um, last year we discussed the. Um, there was um, some <coughs> discussion about the helipads up at the radio tower. Was there any updates on that? Or. Um, yeah, they were going to fence it off. Yeah, I haven't heard. They were going to fence off the helipad. They were, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we don't want that. Yeah. And they couldn't actually provide us with any legislative reason to do it. Mm -hmm. 
when we said we kind of like to do that for safety reasons. For the It'd be a pretty big wide fence and take up a massive area out there. Essentially, yeah. you know, it's in their best interest to have the public walking through there frequently. I thought it was pretty obnoxious for them to put the chain link where they did. Yeah. yeah. They were looking at expanding it, weren't they, too? And we yeah. put a motion against it. Yeah. They were full. Great, thank you. Sue, did you have anything else you want to add? Okay. Um, would anyone like to motion to terminate the meeting? Oh, show of hands. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Great.